Hi everyone, at the MCM bus stage. We are live here at MCM London Comic Con and we have a fantastic star for you, all the way from Gotham. Please give it up for Erin Richards. You've got a nice Saturday morning crowd out for yeah, you. Yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> you all had your coffee. I have not had or a coffee. Or tea. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's great to have you here. And uh, obviously you're on break from Gotham at the moment. So what have you been up to? So you've been walking your dogs, baking some cakes. <laughs> yeah, just the usual. No, I've been um, filming a film in Portugal called That Good Night with uh, John Hurt, who I think you'll probably know, and Sophia Helene, who was in The Bridge. She's the lead uh, woman character of The Bridge, okay. female character of The Bridge. Um, and yeah, we filmed it in Portugal. It rains like 90% <laughs> of the time in the Algarve, which like classically is just supposed to be sun. Yeah. And we had, uh, I think we had 10 days of sun out of 46. So it was a bit, a bit hard work, but it was great. And Max Brown as well, who I don't know if you know, um, an actor from the Tudors way back and has done a bunch of stuff since. So it's yeah. just the four of us in a lovely villa in Portugal. So oh. I went uh, surfing half the time, which is lovely. Fantastic. It's not bad luck. Yeah. No. Well, actually, I met up with Corey Michael Smith and Sean Pertwee recently, who are your co-stars in Gotham. And uh, Corey was visiting England. One of the things he mentioned was he went really geeked out at watching the Trooping of the Guard um, in London. So I was wondering, have you had much chance to um, go around um, America or holiday with your co-stars or anything like that? And not as much as I'd like. Um, I feel like uh, we did, what did we do? Denver recently, and I've been to Houston. Mm -hmm. Done a lot of the South, yeah. New Orleans, that yeah. was great. Oh, wow. Yeah, beautiful. But there's so much more, obviously, of it that I want to explore. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to get a chance to go to Chicago. Well, I did Chicago, but Illinois, because my cousins I've got some American cousins who live in North Carolina and my auntie is in Illinois so, so oh, I want to see. Fantastic well obviously we're here to talk about Gotham first of all which is a fantastic show part of the DC family and um, you've just had a season three renewal so congratulations thank you, for thank that. you. Um, so what can we expect do you think for your character in season three um, so I don't, you guys haven't seen the end of this season yet, have you? So I will not give any spoilers away. But uh, Babs has obviously been on this sort of crazy ride um, through season two where uh, you have seen the episode where she goes to gym after she comes out of Arkham, after she's sort of been, uh, she's been through the coma and she's come back and she's basically has her memory back intact and yeah. she remembers what she did but she doesn't feel like she did any of that stuff so she feels like she's gone to Gordon to get him like as a last ditch attempt to save her and he turns her down and then she goes into this kind of slightly freaky um, uh, PD, PD, PDS is that it post-traumatic PTSD PTSD that one uh, so she's in that, in the last episode you saw, I think she was in that kind of moment. And then she, she comes out of that a little bit. And um, the, the third season is going to be, um, uh, <laughs> I can't, I literally can't say a thing without giving anything away. But it'll basically just be her re reclaiming a little bit of um, power against key players in Gotham. There we go. I mean, I think essentially we know that sort of Fish Mooney is there. You've obviously, at the moment, Hugo Strange, but you've got um, the Arkham Asylum and the monsters in there, and they're all going to probably be players we expect in, in season four. Um, but where do you think Barbara would fit in? You know, would she be, a, would she be okay if she had to sort of work with Fish Mooney? Would she stay with the with the um, penguin, what do you think would, would happen? Especially with her new kind of mindset. Yeah, I think the great thing about Babs is that she s can mold herself to anybody. So she's, she just uses whichever person is in power at that time to get yeah. what she needs. Um, so she's a bit of a chameleon in that sense, but also she's very durable because she's just hot from one person to the other and use yeah. whatever they have to gain her power. So yeah, yeah. whoever's in charge, she'll just find them and She'll use them. latch on. Absolutely. <laughs> um, 
Well, one of the things that we love about your character as well is the way that she just, she verges on insanity quite a lot. How just like me. <laughs> how is it playing that character? Is it really draining to do those scenes? And how do you keep your energy up? Um, it's, it's not so much, dr it's not draining. Uh, I guess it is draining by the end of the day in terms of like emotionally it can be a lot. But when I'm, when I'm playing the character, it feels very, um, I feel very full of energy and vibrant. And whatever she's going through, it feels like... Um, a really exciting thing to play always. Uh, what I didn't realize, which I have realized since doing this film that I just did in Portugal, where my character was super like normal and um, very confident, but just kind of like a quiet confidence and grounded and just great. Mm. And I got to play that cat, her, her name was Cassie. And I got to play her, she's basically the most grounded person in the film in That Good Night. And I got to play her for a month and a half. And I just came about out of the thing going like, nailed it. I can <laughs> totally act. I'm brilliant. Because the character was so confident, I became confident. Whereas Barbara, she's so insane. I get to ev the end of every day and I'm like, I've got no idea. I, that could have been awful. I won't <laughs> swear. That could have been poo. <laughs> turd. Turd-like. And I wouldn't know because she's so all over the place that in order to play her, I have to put myself in a mindset that goes all over the place. And the thing is, if you live in that mindset for nine months of the year, it does change your brain. Like meditating changes your brain into good. Being completely unsure of what you're doing all the time as Barbara makes me bad, <laughs> like in my head. So it was really nice to get a break from it. <laughs> well, we think you're great, right? Everyone loves Barbara here. And um, one of the things with her being being the way that she is, she does seem to have some control over her outburst. So do you think that she is mad or bad? She doesn't, she's, she's not mad in the, like, well, she is, but she doesn't think it. You know, mm. she's, she's just kind of reactionary, I think. She's quite, um, I think of her as quite elemental. Like, she just, an instinctive. So she just reacts on instinct all the time. And she has really good instincts, like that way that she can just be like, oh, that's the person in power. You know, she'll, right. she'll just know before even they know sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll go for them and suck off them and then I'll just move and move and move until I get where I want to be. Yeah. But um, she wouldn't think she's mad, definitely not. She's just kind of living in it. Um, yeah. And I don't think she's bad. I think she, she, just, she really just wants to find her place. Like, that's what she's looking for. Yeah. She never felt like... And so she just attaches all of this kind of, um, I guess, like, hope onto people. So she attached all her hope onto Jim. Yeah. And then that didn't really work. So then she attached all her hope onto Gallivant. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like she's just looking to get to where she'll feel good, and she yeah. never does. Well, do you think then if, you know, Jim Gordon was willing to take her back, that she that would kind of bring the best out of Barbara? Yeah, I think so, for a bit. Yeah, for a bit. <laughs> so she changed her mind again. <laughs> yeah, so something better comes along. No, I think that's her ultimate goal, is to try and win Jim back. I don't think she's thought about what would happen after that moment. Mm. Well, one of my friends who loves the show recently pondered, is it, I mean, it always seems like she feels that Jim is her soulmate, but like you said, she does shift around a bit between people. Is it possible that Tabitha is actually her soulmate? Oh, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Jessica Lu Lucas, who plays Tabitha, is such a gem. I would love it if, that they, if they were like, oh, yeah, it's you two yeah, forever. Um, I think that she definitely has a special place for Tabitha because um, a lot in the second series, she learned a lot of um, kind of the, the Tabitha's skills or like Tabitha's kind of way of being her strength. Barbara learned a bit of that off Tabitha in the second season. Mm -hmm. So she definitely sees her as a bit of a mentor, if nothing else. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to fan questions in just a moment. But before we do, you obviously do a lot of your scenes with Emma Kenzie, who plays Jim Gordon. So can you tell us something about him or about working with him that fans might not know? <laughs> um, might you not know? Well, you might, I mean, there's a scene coming up in the, in the um, 
in the final episode of season two, which I don't think you'll expect. And he is a brilliant comedy actor. There you go. Fantastic. Okay, so if you guys want to ask a question, do you want to stick your hands up for me and I will come around to you? Does that anyone take it? Okay. It's got them written down. Um, in season three, uh, what villains can we expect to see? You know how we've seen um, Jerome, who we thought was a Joker but couldn't have been. Things like that. Who can we expect? Who can we expect? Um, so you can expect that storyline, that Joker storyline, to kind of continue to permeate into Gotham because. The point of that was that Joker, the, uh, the Jerome, sorry, led to other kind of Joker-esque characters. So you can expect that. And then also in the final episode, which will be coming up here, uh, you'll see an, uh, an outbreak of some of the Indian Hill monsters. So you can, you can expect to see more of those. Great. Another question over here. Um, in the show, Lee portrays herself as your love rival. Are we likely to see um, a resurgence of Lee and whether there are any more scenes between the both of you in season three? Between me and who, sorry? The between you and Lee, Ben McKenzie's love interest in the show. Oh, Lee, yeah. yes, yeah, 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 Morena. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know whether you'll, we haven't been, we haven't seen any of the scripts yet for season three. So I, I, I don't know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I'd like to because working with Marina was brilliant. And have you seen her in um, Deadpool? It was so good, she's so brilliant. So yeah, I'm hoping that there would be more, um, but I think it'll depend on her storyline with um, ben, Ben's character. Do you think Falcones drew a bit of a reappearance? I hope so, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the Falcone character is kind of like, the ultimate in our series, you know, he's like the, he's like almost like the god oh, <laughs> of Gotham. So I really hope that he does make a reappearance, yeah. What's your favorite aspect about the show? I like how real it is. I mean, I know we're a comic book series, but I like that we try and keep it kind of as close to reality as we can in that our characters are playing out real real emotions and you can sort of see the real development of how all of those villains became who they who they become and we don't have we have we don't have too much other than kind of intent for our characters like they don't have any superpowers so they have to just use their like true intent which i really enjoy i like these guys in the um ghostbusters nice one ladies <laughs> If you could go to any other DC Marvel characters at all, who would you choose? Have I what, sorry? sorry? If you could go to any other Marvel or DC characters, who would you choose if, if you could, could be someone be else? One. That's always so hard, like male and female as well. Like, it would be a male or a female. I'd be the Hulk. Do you watch the show at home, Renee? Really? If, if so, who's your favourite character on the show? Homeland? Who, who's your favourite character on the show? I can't hear, sorry. Who is your favourite character in Gotham? Oh, in Gotham? Um, changes all the time. Uh, Ivy. I'm going to go for Ivy today. <laughs> Thanks. Next question. Hi. Do you have any control over the script? So, for instance, there's a scene that you don't particularly think that Barbara is going in the right direction. Do you have any direct input into it? Yeah, absolutely. Our um, writers and our series creator, Bruno Heller, uh, they're really great about talking to us and, and letting us talk through any kind of concerns that we might have. But also, you know, they know way further down the line than we do what these characters are doing so if i put forward like a why why is it like this uh, they'll either change it or they'll say 
it's there's a good reason so just stick with it do you know what i mean like they're really there's it's, it's not like this wall where they're just like do whatever we say they're really good at chatting it out and stuff and also listening to our ideas about what we we might have i mean they listen who knows if they're ever like <laughs> ever do anything about it but yeah they they're really great well i'd love to know actually because you obviously have a dc tv family out there um with all the other shows on the cw yeah. so um how is it firstly when you go to the cons with them and being part of that DC family? And secondly, is there a show out of those that you would like to, say, cross over with? Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, we all get together loads of these things and everyone's kind of become really good friends now, which is lovely. Um, we hang out with the Arrow lot, a lot and Flash. And um, I don't know, like, I feel the problem, the difference is that Gotham is... A, like I say, sort of like less super powery. So I don't know whether that crossover would work so well, but I think it would be really fun to do something with those guys. Sure. And um, also, talking about Gotham, you have a huge cast. I've always wondered if you had, the, in terms of sort of Batman versus Superman on the back of that, if you had men of Gotham versus women of Gotham, who would win? Obviously the women. I'm not going to say the men, am I? No, women all the way. It would be a lovely, we just hug. It would be a lovely loving. Everyone. It would just be loving. It's loving. I'm about love, <laughs> not war. You can negotiate away from the war. Oh, yeah. Oh, women could definitely do that. <laughs> I can negotiate myself out of anything. Well, thank you so much. That's all we have time for. But everyone, please say a huge thank you to our guest, Erin Richards. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Nice to see you all. <laughs>